Hello, I'm Patrick Brown, and this is Scripture versus Scripture. Today, we're going to do our last part in our short series of Jeremiah. Uh, we just did uh, chapter one, Jeremiah chapter one through. Uh, we're going to go midway into chapter six. I hope you be blessed uh, by what uh, you will hear today. Um, let me know. Uh, hopefully, I will have sections here where you can just let me know some of the uh, books or subjects that you will want me as a uh, teacher to cover. I'm open to it. Uh, I want to uh, let people be edified and, and, and talk about things that people want to talk about and things people want to hear about. More than that, I want to make sure that whatever I say is according to the will and the word of God himself. So with that being said, before we start our study, let us talk to the master. Let us bow. Heavenly Father and Father God, Lord, we just thank you for your word. Lord, we pray that everything that's going to be said be according to your word and according to your will, Lord. Speak through the teacher of Heavenly Father. Let everything be your words and not my words of Heavenly Father. Let the lesson be clear and concise, Lord, and let the eyes and ears of the listener be spiritually open and spiritually awakened to the truth of your words. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, Jeremiah <clears throat> chapter 6, starting verse 10. Uh, the subject matter today, uh, this lesson is called Slightly Healed. Slightly healed, healed slightly. Okay, Jeremiah chapter 6, starting verse 10. Let's get into the lesson. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. Again, Jeremiah is uh, speaking for the Lord here. And he's letting the people know, <clears throat> you know he's a prophet. So he's prophesying the words of the Lord. And it says, thus said the Lord of hosts. Okay. In verse nine, it says, thus said the Lord. So again, this is the Lord's words. Okay. Whom shall I speak and give warning that they, they may hear? It's talking about Judah and Israel. They have, aren't listening to God. They're, they're turning their back to God. As a matter of fact, they said the words of God to them is a reproach. They have no delight in God's word. The whole purpose of talking about Jeremiah and talking about Judah and Israel's tres trespasses and transgressions is to see and learn from their mistakes so that we do not have to repeat them today as God's children, God's people today, the followers of God, the family of God, the, the body of Christ. We supposed to learn from their mistakes so that we don't have to repeat them today. From the, the it's like older brother, younger brother, we should not repeat the mistakes of our older sibling. Yet, this is written in the Bible, and when we look around today, we see people still not hearkening or listening to the voice of the Lord. Okay, so uh, he calls their ear uncircumcised. All right now, there was a covenant that God made with their forefather Abraham, and part of that covenant was the males to be circumcised. Part of that circumcision was to identify that you were a Hebrew, that you were part of this covenant that their forefather Abraham made with God. You was part of the promise. You was part of the people. Okay. He's saying their ear is uncircumcised. What are they? What is he saying? That they are un, they are covenant breakers. That they are covenant breakers who cannot even listen to me, who won't follow what I'm trying to tell them. Okay. Therefore, I am full of the fury of the Lord, and I am weary with holding in. All right. He said, I'm tired of holding back. I'm tired of when you look around and you see the the, 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 the the rampantness of wickedness in the world today. All right. When you look around, and you see the laws that are being passed all over the place where uh, people are marrying same sex partners and stuff. We look around and you see the wars all over the place. When you look around and see the theft and people running Ponzi schemes. And when you look around, you see the people in the pulpit who are letting people preach that's not supposed to preach and stand there who are tell, teaching messages that's not the gospel message who, who are false prophets and false teachers and, and telling people about their best life now and telling people how God just wants to bless them and yet have not told people about their sins so that they can repent and turn back to the Lord. When you look around and see all the wickedness everywhere, those of us who are eyes and ears are open and attentive to the Lord, we are wondering when is God going to get tired of holding it in? When is going to let that can uh, uh, fears all over the place, a uh, whoop butt, okay? God's fury, surely. Now, we can see the world, and as a human being, a sinful man, and it disgusts me to see the things that's going on, what about a holy God when he looks down and sees all this stuff? 
What was God thinking when he looked down on Sodom and Gomorrah and he seen all that stuff? When he went down and said, let me see close, see for myself, see closely and examine this. Well, what did he do? He got tired of holding it in. He destroyed that city. He destroyed that city. He's saying, I'm looking at these people and I'm tired of holding it in. I will pour it out upon the children abroad and upon the assembly of young men together. For even the husband with the wife shall be taken. The age with him that is full of days, both young and old. He said, I'm tired. I'm finished to get these people. I'm finished to punish these people. I'm finna let them go into captivity. I'm going to destroy them. Maybe with pestilence, maybe with the disease. Whatever God have in mind, we know that he is sick and tired. Now, we understand that's an expression, sick and tired. All right. Now, God can't get sick. As a matter of fact, God can't get tired. But that expression we can understand as human beings means he's full of it. He's tired of holding it in. He's not going to do it no more. He's about to punish. OK. And their houses shall be turned unto others. I'm going to give it to someone else. And their fields and wives gathered gather together. For I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. Why? Their own iniquity, their own sins, their own trespasses and trans transgression. God is patient, very patient, the most patient, more patient than any man. Yet even God has his limits. Even God says, time's up. There's going to be a time when God's going to say time's up. Where will you be when God says that? Whose side are you going to be on when God says that? He will say it. And if you look at the world today, it's probably sooner rather than later. Are we going to learn from these people? Are we? Are we going to ignore them and walk around with eyes shut and ears closed? Okay. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. Oh, he said from the least of them to the greatest, all these people do is covet. There are people today who follow people in the ministry, who have a, a gospel of greed, who has a prosperity gospel. And all these people do is look to preachers to tell them what God can do for them, what God can give them, how God can bless them, how God can make them rich. And then all the while, these ministers are waxing fat. They shine. They rich. They got bling. They got rims. They got mansions. They got planes. They got jets. They got all this. And people see that and they egg them on because that's what the people want, what the pastors have. And the, the people believe that if I give this man these things, then I can have it too. All the while, they're getting fleeced by the thousands, by the millions, because their own greed, their own covetousness got them trapped in a cycle of despair, a cycle of deceit, being deceived, all right? He says, for the least of them, even to the greatest, everyone is given to covetousness. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, everyone dealeth what? Falsely. Again, the prophet and the priest have discovered, you know what? If I say this, if I do this, if I show them this, they'll give me all their stuff. And the people are, the people do. They, do it, they did it then and they're doing it today. They're doing it today. Blind as a bat, not knowing that these people are fleecing them. They're fleecing them. They're fleecing the flock. Priests and what? Prophet. False teachers today. False pastors today. Fleecing people. Uh, making merchandise of men, like the Bible said they were. There's nothing new up under the sun. It's still going on today and in spades. Why? Because people don't want to hear the true word, the true gospel. That all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. No, no, no. Tell me how to get a better life now. All right. No, not a better life. The best life now. OK, tell me how God can bless me with a, a mansion and a Rolex and, and, and a Bentley. Tell me that yeah? all the while. Not telling me about my sin. All right? Not telling me about holiness. Not telling me that God, uh, uh, that, that God wants me to be content with what I have and live godly. No, no, no. that message is not for me. Give me the other message and let him fleece me. To, to fleece me to 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 till I'm broke. Let them fleece me. Uh, take all of my stuff from me. Take all my little money. Take all my little pension. No, no. But you did it unto yourself, right? Again, for on a prophet, even unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. Verse fourteen. The subject matter of the day. They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people, 
slightly saying peace, peace, when there is no peace. The only thing God gives for uh, rebellion, the only thing God gives for sin, the only thing God gives for rejection of him, the only thing God gives for stuff that is against his word is punishment, is captivity, is death for sin. That's all. He, ain't nothing good. God doesn't reward unrighteousness. God doesn't reward wickedness. God doesn't reward your, you and your sin. That, no, that's not the way. But they say, these teachers say, peace, peace. What? When there is no peace. Oh, don't worry about it that you're sleeping around. Just tied to me and God going to bless you with a house. Don't worry about it that you never tell the truth or that, that you steal from the job. Don't worry, worry about it that you do this, that, and the other. That's against God's word. Don't worry about you live a homosexual lifestyle. God loves you anyway. Just tied to me and you're going to live. You're going to be blessed that you're going to go to heaven. The, the, the God uh, God loves you anyhow, so you're going to go to heaven. You you ain't got to follow his commands. You, you ain't got to put All you got to do is give you a little tithe. So in the meanwhile, they fleecing you all the while letting you go to hell. Okay? All the while, when you see God, you're going to say, say, Lord, Lord, and God going to say, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. Depart from me. I'll say it again. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. You were never one of mine. Obviously, you was one of his. You followed him. You weren't following me. Okay? So these people are lying to everyone else saying, God going to bless you. You're going to have a life full of peace. You're going to have a life full of prosperity. You're going to do this. And you're living wicked. And they're not checking you in your sin. Not after, not, some people don't even mention the word sin. Huh? They just keep telling you what God's going to do for you when you are clearly rebelling against God. You don't do nothing the Bible say do. You don't, you don't follow none of that. Right? You don't think it's important. No, no. You don't think it's important. It says peace, peace. Well, there is no peace. God said, I'm not going to bless you. There ain't no peace coming. War coming. Pestilence coming. Disease coming. Uh, 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 They're going to come conquer you. I'm going to send a nation to conquer you. All right? Were they ashamed? Verse 15. Were they ashamed when they committed abomination? Hmm, I wonder what abomination is. Yeah, the Bible tell you what abomination is. Maybe some of us need to look it up. Okay? The Bible tells us what abomination is. The Bible tells us what wickedness is. Maybe some of us need to look it up. And then look at the scripture where it says, Nobody is going to inherit the kingdom of God that do a long list of things. All right. Yeah. That's Bible study for you. That's that's, that's homework. OK. But I'm here to tell you that people that do these things, this long list of things, God don't say, OK, now I'm going to bless you with a mansion or a Rolex or a house or a car. No, God said you will have no inheritance in the kingdom of God. That's what God says. But these people are telling him, God going to bless you in your wickedness. It doesn't work like that. OK. OK. Were they ashamed? The answer is no, when they had committed abomination. Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. They didn't even blush. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, said the Lord. God said, you, didn't, you weren't ashamed to turn your back on me, to fornicate. To, to live a homosexual lifestyle, to live a life of a thief, to steal, to embezzle, to lie, to, 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 to do all this manner of wickedness, and I'm going to come visit you for that. Now, you're going to sit there and say that I'm a child of God, that I'm a Christian, that I'm a do and the, 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 that I'm this, that, and the other, all the while living a wicked lifestyle. It doesn't matter if you go to church, no matter if you read the Bible, if you don't do what the Bible says. If you don't believe that's what, what's written. You, you, that, how can you call me Lord? Why you call me Lord and do not what I say? Okay. Again, God going to say, when you say Lord, he's going to say, hmm, no, no, not of mine. Never knew you. All right. God said, you're going to be cast down, said the Lord. Thus said the Lord, stand ye in your ways and see and ask for the old paths, the old ways. Where is the good day? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. He said, Turn back to your old ways, to your old path, the way you used to do, how you used to love me, how you used to walk in a straight and narrow. He said, If you do that, right? He said, Thus are the Lord standing ye you in your ways, and see, and ask for the old way, the old paths, the straight path, not the one, what you're doing now. Where is the good way? Look for the good way, ask for it, seek it, and walk therein. And you, you seek the good way, the, the right way. The, the way that's following the Lord, the way that's being obedient, not rebellion. He said, seek that and walk in that. 
All right. And you will find rest. Then you will find rest. Then you'll find peace. Then you'll find satisfaction. No, I didn't say money. I didn't say a mansion. I didn't say riches. I said, you'll be able to rest. You know that God is happy with you. Your soul will rejoice. Okay. Your soul will be replenished. You'll be able to spread joy to other people. You'll be able to spread the word of God. You'll be happy and content with life. You'll be happy and content where you are. You'll be happy and content. God going to give you that happiness and contentment. Money and riches and fame does not profit. Does not profit. You may think they do. But once you get a new heart, a new mind, a new way of thinking, all that will change. All that will change. Okay? He says, but they said, we will not walk there in the last part of 16, verse 17. Also, I said, watchmen over you, saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hearken. Therefore, hear ye nations and know, O generation, what is among them. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. All these people are going to get the peace, peace that the false prophets that these priests are promising them and telling them that God's going to give them? No. When you reject the word of God, you have nothing to look forward for. To but God's wrath. When you rebel against God, you have nothing to look forward to but God's indignation. And too many people are doing it today. And because God is patient, they take his kindness for weakness. And they listen to all these prophets say, hey, God's going to bless you. God's going to enrich you. God's going to make give you health, wealth, and prosperity. I'm telling them peace, peace. When the word of God clearly says, unless you repent and turn back to God, there will be no peace. What these people are doing, you have counsel, all right? And this is to hit in the hurt of my people slightly. You got counsel and they put a band-aid on it and say, go in peace, you okay, all right? Healing the hurt of my daughter slightly, all right? So so you, you got something, you got a gunshot wound. They put a band-aid on this, hey, go in peace, you're gonna be all right. Healing you slightly, telling you, you all right. See, t- telling you what you wanna hear in your ears, Nobody wants to hear that. You're about to die. Nobody wants you. You're more than one. Nobody want to hear, I got to operate. All right. And that's what these people do. They give you, they tickle your ears and they say, hey, peace, peace. When there is no peace, put a band aid on all them sins and wickedness that you got and say, hey, it's okay. God don't see it or it don't matter. Put a band aid on a mortal wound and send you on your way. Healing the hurt of my people slightly. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father. Father God, we just pray that we as Christians don't listen to these people that's lying, saying peace, peace, where there is no peace, healing the hurt of us slightly, even though we're mortally wounded. We're, our sins, are Lord, is totally against you, Heavenly Father, that we know just how serious sin is in your sight. Just that we know, oh, Heavenly Father, how far we are to the perfection to what you want us to be, that we cry out to you, Lord, forgive us, oh, Heavenly Father, and set us on a, a straight path again. Let us walk in that path, and whatever we follow, Lord, that we confess it to you in sincerity and in truth. Let us have the type of heart that seek your face in all that we do and seek you and you alone, Lord. We pray all these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen.